Great. So go ahead and get us started. Okay, we are recording. So hello everyone. My name is Casey Long. I work in McCain Library at Agnes Scott College and today my co-presenters are Rebecca Holtclaw who works in the Agnes Scott College McCain Library as well and David Russell who works at the Decatur branch of the Decatur Public Library. So the reason why we are all collaborating together is because today we want you to learn about all the fun resources you can get through libraries and sadly um, Academic libraries are tend to be a little academic. So we do have some things to share with you, but David really has the content um, that is going to be most interesting to you. He works at a public library here in Georgia. And um, for the most part, when we've talked about access to these resources, you can find at least one or two, if not all of these, at your local public library. So as long as you get a public library card, the things we're going to show you today could be at your fingertips tomorrow. So that's what we're going to be doing is looking at things that help us access books and other entertaining media that help you unwind during the holidays. Uh, with some of the resources, you will find that there are some tech requirements. So you may have a Kindle and not all of the resources work on a Kindle, but um, there are some tricks that you can do to uh, and things you can look for in some of the resources that will help you know that you can use it on your Kindle. So David's going to mention which ones do work with a Kindle, but when um, Rebecca and I are talking, you're going to want to look out for things that allow you to download a PDF or that um, have an EPUBs file that can be converted into a movie file. Those will let you work with the, with the Kindle. All the other um, devices, as long as you have Chrome or Safari or one of the major uh, web browsers, you're going to be able to use any of the tools we're about to talk to you about. So definitely keep that in mind that as long as you have a good web browser, you're going to be good to go to read, listen, um, and uh, watch whatever you want from these collections. And some people, sometimes you're prompted to download Adobe Digital Editions. That's just a preference. Do you want to have this e-reader on your system? You can, it gives a nice review, but we're not really going to talk about that one because you don't really need it. So those are some of the resources available um, in terms of the tech requirements. What we're going to be talking about today, first David's going to talk about Libby, which is also called Overdrive. Uh, you might have heard of that one. Hoopla and RB Digital. So those are things that are only available at the public library and they are the best out of all the tools that we have to offer and talk about today. Those are the ones I was getting super excited when he was talking about them earlier. Then Rebecca and I, um, if there's time, we're going to talk to you about what McCain Library can offer in terms of these, which, you know, in addition to our print collection, which most people can't access right now if you're remote, um, unless you're having us do something through interlibrary loan and scanning things, you pretty much have to rely on our ebook collection. And we have ebook central and ebooks on Ebscohost, which again, the public libraries have. So um, David's not going to chat about those since the collections are fairly similar. So he's going to leave that to Rebecca and I. So David, go ahead and I'm going to stop sharing and let you take over. All right. Hey, uh, I'm going to share my screen now. All right. I'm going to actually start here in Hoopla. Hoopla, a lot of libraries owned. Um, you can borrow anywhere between five and 10 titles, depending on the library. Um, what Hoopla does uh, is just another digital service. You can download movies, you can download music, uh, ebooks, comics, and television shows. So there, there's a lot there. Um, there's a couple things I wanted to kind of highlight real quick. Um, in your settings, uh, one really cool thing you could do if you're a parent, um, you can immediately turn on kids mode. That way, if your kid is browsing, uh, you know, on your device, he's not going to see anything adult. He's not going to accidentally download anything he shouldn't. So it'll only show the kids titles. Um, you can also check your browsing history and you can favorite things. Uh, in the recommendation section, if you love uh, Christian nonfiction, you can click that. And then when you're browsing ebooks, it knows that you like Christian nonfiction. So under recommended, it's going to give you more of those and the same with movie categories, music, comic, ebook categories. Uh, in browsing, they actually have a lot of decent uh, newer stuff in some of the categories like music. Um, I know Chris Stapleton's a big country star. They have the Hamilton soundtrack. 
both a clean version and parental advisory. They have Frozen 2, they have new Ariana Grande and the new Taylor Swift. So they get some decent music stuff and they have a lot of Christmas albums too. And uh, for, for television, one of the, uh, they have a lot of British shows, a lot of the BBC shows, if you can't find them streaming elsewhere, you could find those on Hoopla. One thing though is they do uh, download by episode, but so your five borrows would be the first five episodes of a show, but Hoopla also does bonus borrows such as this, so you could download the whole series and it wouldn't count against any of your five borrows for the month. So that's kind of cool. Um, another thing they have for television is the Great British Baking Show. So you could download five or six episodes of the Great British Baking Show and they immediately come up on your screen and you have a week to watch them. So if you just wanted to see them bake torts or something like that, you could just find that episode and download it and that would just be one borrow. You just still have four left and you have a week to watch it. Um, the audiobooks are pretty decent too. Um, let's see. They have featured, which is nice, like the featured ones for the week, you're gonna get um, some newer stuff. Then they have the popular ones so you can see what else everybody else is downloading. Uh, and then they have a lot of great eBooks. One of the big ones I just noticed, they have the Queen's Gambit, which is the hot new Netflix show. Uh, it was a book years ago first, so you can download the book and read it immediately. And one of the nice things about uh, Hoopla is there's never any holds. There's, you never have to wait for anything. If it's there, you can immediately download it and you're good to go. So that, that's kind of nice too. Um, some of the searches are really fun. You can search specifically for book club recommendations and they come up with uh, like different book club titles for, for that you can choose. So that's, that was kind of neat. And then uh, I downloaded a few just to show you what some of the things look like. Uh, the Cider House Cookbook just to show how really nice these pictures are and just the fact that they have so many cookbooks to share. So if you wanted uh, to download a recipe or just like a whole cookbook, it, it looks like this. It's just, it's really easy to read. And once it finishes loading, we can show you uh, some of the different pages. But if you are interested in a parsnip apple and celery root soup from the apple cider cookbook, uh, Here's your shot. But some of these are just really nice. Like the pictures are just really vibrant. And it, it's, it's just cookbooks are a really cool thing to download on Hoopla. So after Hoopla, we can go into Libby. Libby is, um, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, it's basically Overdrive's digital app. Um, so what you can do with, with Libby is uh, you can look immediately at Lucky Day titles. These are sometimes new titles or super popular titles that you can just download immediately. Um, like if you wanted to read The Glass Hotel, which was a sequel to Station Eleven, which was a book years ago that people really loved, uh, you're more than welcome to do that on Libby. And what you can do is read a sample first and then borrow it. When you borrow it, well, I've reached the skip the line limit for this card, but you haven't. Um, so we'll just download something else. Uh, you can read with Kindle on this, and you can read with Kindle on Hoopla, as long as your Kindle has an app uh, store. So the Kindle Fire has an app store, so you can download the Hoopla app. You can't just download a book off of Hoopla and read it elsewhere, though. So what's available now? So say we wanted uh, the Gail Foreman book. So we can borrow that. Borrow. Open book. And this will give you an option. Do you want to do it on Kindle if you have a Kindle? 
or do you want to do it on Libby, this app? So we'll do it in Libby. And then the book comes up, it has the whole, it has all the frontage pieces, it has everything you need. And then you can read, skip to any chapter or just read on the browser immediately. So another, um, a book I downloaded earlier, Night Film. What I love about this is it has really, really bright pictures and some of the pictures it has is like from a New York Times article in the book and it looks great on the, on the screen. So this is another just really cool, uh, really cool book. Yeah. And it's the same way you can just download the whole thing and read it. But yeah, this is a, uh, supposedly like a New York Times article and they have it in the, in the ebook version. So it looks like you're reading like a digital New York Times. So it's just the way they, they format the ebooks. It's like, it's almost as much fun as the book itself, especially for titles like that. Um, if you only want content that's available on Kindle, uh, you can search and then compatibility Kindle and then anything that comes up, you know, is going to be available on your Kindle. So that's another nice uh, Libby feature. And the easiest way to browse is uh, available audiobooks, books, popular audiobooks, popular books. Um, so if you click on popular audiobooks, a lot of some of these have holes lists, some of them don't, but one really fun thing is if you like a narrator in an audiobook, you can click on that narrator and see what else they've narrated. So you can kind of maybe find like a new book that way and you hear a voice you like, you can hear what else they've narrated. So that's kind of fun too. And all the brand new books are here immediately. You can put holes on them before they even come up in the catalog. Um, these are great. The Harry Potter books are great because Jim Dale is such an excellent narrator. So you can download those and listen to them if you have like a long car trip or something like that. So that's basically what you can do in, uh, in Libby. So now we are going to go over to RB Digital. RB Digital is another uh, resource we have at the library. You can search by genre of magazines. Some really cool features about RB Digital is there's no download limit. You can download as many magazines as you want. Uh, there's never going to be overdue. They're going to just stay in your collection. So you can download any back issue, any new magazine. And if you continually want the current issues, all you have to do is click automatically check out the next issue and the next issue will continue to check out, but you'll still have the back catalog if you want it. Uh, a cool feature I noticed here is they have a whole section of adult coloring books. So if you wanted to uh, color eagles and owls, all you would do would be check out. And then you can start reading. And the RV digital apps, again, like Hoopla, you would have to read it on an app. So if you had a Kindle Fire with an app store, you could download the RV digital app or iOS or Android for your phone. So you could start reading on RV digital and you can scroll in and out and color the coloring book. It's, uh, that's pretty, that's basically how it's going to be for all the coloring books. I downloaded another one just to show. Uh, this is the new Belgium brewery coloring book. It's the same way you can print pictures. So you can print the pictures out and color them. And, uh, you know, it works that way too. You can enlarge the text with the, the magnifying glass. And also, um, another e-content that we're not going to talk about today is press reader. So if you are at Angus Scott, but you're from Iowa and you want your local paper, 
press reader probably has it. So you can download your local paper same day. It's another feature we have at the library of the library card. Um, I did want to highlight Overdrive for a second too, even though they are basically working with the same content as Libby, they're not getting much new. So this is more older stuff. But one kind of cool thing is um, you can actually search um, in one of the search categories under advanced is uh, Lexile range. So for kids, for parents and kids, a lot of the schools now are talking about Lexile range. Um, and you can search titles by Lexile range. And that's a, a helpful search tool sometimes as well. Uh, for parents. So I did just want to highlight that. Um, and if you wanted to create a library card yourself from the DeKalb libraries, uh, all you have to do is click this link, get a library card, and then you can self-register. And all we need is your zip code and a few pieces of personal information. And then you call a branch and we'll give you a, a hard copy library card number. And then you can start downloading uh, books from Libby, Overdrive, Hoopla, and uh, RV Digital immediately. So those are uh, those are the, uh, the the things we have uh, at the library. So that's great. Thank you so much, David. Welcome. And I just want to remind everyone that uh, that is at the DeKalb County Public Library here in Georgia, um, but Almost every city and every county throughout the United States has a public library system. You probably know which yours is, or you, maybe you need to Google it, but you need to find your public library. And we are fairly positive that at least one of those resources is gonna be there. And you should be um, the main practice right now. Everybody knows that everybody's remote. So um, just like uh, David was saying that you don't have to go into the Decatur uh, branch of the public library to get the, um, library card, you can probably contact your library and get your library card set up if you don't have one already. So those are really some awesome resources that we have um, accessible through public library systems. Now Rebecca is going to get you started talking about the ones that we do actually have for you right away at Agnes Scott. So Rebecca, take it away. Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, eBook Central. So this is one of our databases I'm going to go ahead and present here. Um, and so it's a little bit smaller than the database that uh, Casey is going to talk about in regards to the fiction. There's currently 3,559 fiction ebooks available on this database um, under the fiction tag. 20% uh, of these are classics. So that's going to be your Pride and Prejudice, uh, Frankenstein, um, some of the older reads. However, there's also this uh, good blend of popular fiction and really unique indie reads that you wouldn't necessarily find in a bookstore um, and in a lot of libraries probably. Uh, however, total ebooks, there's going to be 222,000 um, ebooks just on various topics and categories. And I'll show you how to get to this database in a moment, but I'm just going to share what some of those categories are. So you're going to be able to find cookbooks uh, like David highlighted earlier. Um, <clears throat> they do have where you can narrow down your search so that you're only viewing vegetarian cookbooks or certain types of cuisine. Uh, so that's one way to search for these. That's going to be very useful if you want to try a new dish with your family over the break that's coming up. Uh, there's also fitness books available. Um, we have New Year's resolutions right around the corner. So if in your New Year's resolution, uh, one of those is to get fit or to work on your mental health. You can narrow down your subjects so that you're just looking at books that are related to mental health or to uh, health and fitness. Another of uh, these categories you're gonna find, um, I call them skill building books. They're just various uh, subjects that are related to building a certain skill. So there's a crossword book for learning uh, beginner's Italian. So if you're interested in learning um, a new language over break. This is a fun way to do that. Um, also, we're in the middle of NaNoWriMo right now, which is National Novel Writing Month. So at the end of this month, you might be in the editing part of writing your novel and maybe want to check out writing horror fiction or another writer's guide that can um, guide you in your way through edits and just strengthening the novel if you're working on that. 
Uh, there's also crafting and activity books. So you can find um, here I have a Spider-Man villains quiz book. There's also ones about celebrities uh, and different TV shows. Um, and there's going to be uh, craft books on embroidery and home decor, uh, all different subjects. But you can also find brain teasers if you like to do those with your family over the break. Or if you just need a break from your family and want to go in your room and work on some brain teasers, you can find those kinds of books here. And lastly, I did mention that there's 3,559 fiction titles. And so largely you're going to find a lot of classics, but you're also going to find uh, these other subjects that I've listed here. Um, under the fiction tag. And so, as you can see, there are some popular titles here. Octavia Butler's Kindred is one of our most checked out books at McCain Library that isn't on reserve. Um, it's, we always have lots of people coming in asking for it and we have multiple copies, but they are both usually checked out. Um, so if that happens and you come in and you wanna read Kindred by Octavia Butler, now you know you can find an ebook copy of it available on ebook central. Uh, there's also the graphic novel adaptation, adaptation which is pictured here. Um, and then you'll also find other popular books like The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, uh, Robin McKinley, The Bone Keeper. Uh, you'll find short stories like Kelly Link's Stranger Things Happen. Um, and you'll also find uh, the classics such as Anne of Green Gables. Um, and one of the more unique books that I did find on this uh, database is when I was looking, I saw the tag music fiction and I said what is music fiction and I clicked on it and it turns out um, that's a subgenre that is available on this site and one of the books that I found is a almost retelling of Anne of Green Gables but where Anne Shirley is born in the 1970s and joins a rock band. So it's something I had never heard of and never imagined existing. Um, but you can find very unique reads just by going through the subjects and the tags on this site. So I'm going to um, close out of this presentation and show you how you can get there from the library homepage. So from the homepage, you're gonna have uh, your discover box here. And if you just click on databases A to Z, this will bring up the list of all the databases available in McCain Library. Under E, you're gonna find eBook Central and then eBooks on EBSCOhost are gonna be right next to each other. So if you open eBook Central, this will come to the main page of uh, the database that I've been talking about. Now, because I've been using this uh, site recently, you're going to see that I have a bunch of recently viewed. If you've never used it before, it might show you some um, popular books or some new books that you should check out that it's recommending for you. Um, I'm going to go under Browse Subjects and show you how to get just to the fiction. So if you go into the Browse su uh, Subjects under Literature and Language, you will see the fiction, uh, the fiction tag. And then from here, this is going to come up with uh, some of the newer results. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to change the results per page to 100 because I like to view a lot of options. And then I'm also going to go on to the uh, sidebar here and click show more under the subjects. And this is going to show me all of the fiction uh, ebooks available um, and their subject categories. So here you can see the fiction classics is the most popular. Um, but you'll also see there's some juvenile fiction, there's uh, historical romance, there is crime fiction. And so as you scroll down, you're going to find smaller and smaller, um, more specific categories. And that's, that's just always very fun to see what exactly um, there is on this site. So I'm going to uh, go up. If you don't want to look at just fiction, if you just want to view all the ebooks that are on this site, maybe you want to look at... Um, cookbooks, or you just want to see the other categories, you can clear out of this tag, and that's going to bring up the 222,000 plus book results. And you'll have the same uh, sidebar here with the subjects, but it's going to be more expanded now to have scholarly and academic texts, to have uh, cookbooks, to have history books, um, and all kinds of genres on the side here. And so that is a um, just a way of navigating the different facets on this site. And Casey, I'm gonna switch it over to you. Do you mind going back for just a second? Yeah, sure. Um, Cause there's one other thing that I think is really useful to know about this tool and also the one I'm about to show. If you um, are looking at that first book, um, there's an option for you to add it to your bookshelf. So the second little option over there, um, you can add it to your bookshelf. 
And at the very top, it has a bookshelf where um, maybe you're not ready to read this one today, but you will just want to build the list. Um, at the very top, it'll have your bookshelf up there. And it's also a way that you can share lists. Are you having a hard time finding it? I think I have the uh, box right over it. Yeah, there you go. So you just add it there and you can name these. So I've created several lists and I often, um, I can share those with other people. So Agnes, in doing, um, uh, assisting people with career work, then you can create a bookshelf um, and then share the link with them and they can uh, read, the list of books and browse at their leisure. So I think that's a really useful feature. So thank you, Rebecca. Let's see, all right, I'm gonna stop sharing now and we can go to Casey. All right, so we're gonna finish up. Um, honestly, the eBooks on EBSCOhost is really not that much different than what you just saw with eBook Central. It is a little bit more expansive. You get to it, as Rebecca said, through the eBook, um, through the databases A to Z list, and it's underneath eBook Central. So you'll see that there, and then it just launches you into this page. Um, you'll notice up here that it does have a folder, so everything that I'm looking at, if I were to go to this book right here, I am able to add it to that folder, and it will be um, something that I can come back to later. So um, the way that these look though, they're not as pretty as either eBook Central or um, uh, as any of the ones that David showed you. So it's got this interface where um, you can sift through it, but it's just not as beautiful as some of the other ones. So it's a little bit clunkier, but still it gets you what you need and you can search within um, to find the fun books in here what I would do, that is much easier in here. Um, we typically recommend eBook Central, um, which is the other one that Rebecca just showed you, when you wanna find things that are related to more academic topics. But um, for this particular um, database, we it does have academic stuff, but it also has really easy to browse. You saw that Rebecca had to give you some tricks on how to browse. Um, they go right ahead and they identify a lot of how-to categories, um, so if you're interested in business, you're going to find um, things that are going to be about motivating you in terms of business skills, home and gardening. If you have your fiction listed right here. So like I said, there are some academic things in here, but for the most part, you're going to be looking at anything that's going to be DIY, um, hobbies, crafts, um, just personal interest. And so the way that you can search, um, you can do a keyword search, but I'm going to recommend that you go to one of these tags here um, and click on one of them. I'm clicking on fiction. And just like in the database that Rebecca was showing you, on the left-hand side, there's lots more ways to narrow things down. So you could narrow to the last 10 years so that you can just see things that have been published in the last 10 years. And you can also um, go down here to category. This is very similar to what she was showing you before where it shows you the fiction category. But if you go to show more, you can see that 777 are classics. But if you want to find thrillers or mystery or um, crime, you can do that as well. And now that I know that those are categories, what I can do is I can change the search up here. I can go to advanced search. It'll keep this tag that's saying search only fiction. Um, and then in the second box, I can put crime or mystery or mysteries, because I saw that too. They had two different spellings and I want to get them all or thriller. And I can change this menu right over here to category. And now it's just going to search for things that fall into that category that are fiction works. And so it makes it easier for me to browse through. As you can tell, um, I don't know, it, you have to be a really avid reader to know uh, some of these names. So this is going to be less your best sellers, but more um, maybe you've just gone through all the best sellers and you want to try to find something new and interesting. You're going to definitely find some new and interesting authors in here. And just to show you a couple of examples um, in terms of the types of works that are in here, uh, these are some of the fiction titles they have. Definitely more than was in eBook Central. Um, but this is an author that I've been reading about, reading a lot about. Um, I've read several of his works, The Snowman, it was one of his big ones. That's not in here, but this book, um, which is a retelling of Macbeth, is in here. This is Margaret Atwood's retelling of The Tempest, which I'm looking forward to reading. I know we have that in our library collection, but I wanna 
I might try to read it online here. And these other names are also ones that you would know. So um, Margaret Wilkerson Sexton um, and Mark Hayden, and even um, it's covering the name here, but uh, Sigrid uh, Nunez wrote that one about the big Great Dane book called Friend. So there's definitely authors in here that you'll recognize, but you're if you want the most popular fiction, you want to get your public library card and make sure that you talk to your public librarian, use some of the tools that you're finding there, because we do have things to support your entertainment needs, but for the most part, they are set up much better to do that for you. So that's what we've got. Sorry, we went over. Um, uh, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to first ask Rebecca to stop uh, recording.